And we are live. Oh, jolly good. We are live. Hello, folks. Welcome. Greetings and okay. welcome back to our little Tuesday Tate R Tate. Indeed. I think we should have a name like, you know, Lady Gaga has her little monsters. I think we should have our Tuesday Terriers. Tuesday Terriers, yes. Indeed. Welcome aboard here. Yeah. Absolutely. So, listen, by the way, we've got a young lady today we're going to talk to in a few minutes. You sound and, uh, like you've had about three cocktails already. Oh, no, How's not yet. Her? Not yet. I wish. <laughs> she's she's but, still getting um, over the correspondence dinner. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, they didn't ask me to speak. <laughs> they know why. <laughs> I loved when um, the president said something. People think I hate Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. Enunciate. Indeed. So why would I hate him? I mean, he makes me look like Harry Styles. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. Oh, that was lovely. However, today I'm digressing. You are. Yes. Um, we've got a wonderful lady to talk to you. And uh, I mean, I've been trying for oh, a couple of years to get her on the show. Yep. And she's so busy. She's all around the world like a blue arse fly. Can you say arse? I right. think you just did. I just did. So Ruth is going to bring her on. Absolutely. Yes. This is, as we announced yesterday, we're very honored to find time in the schedule of world traveler and world champion, lady pro boxer, Layla Makata. And the crowd goes wild. Good morning, Layla. Hello. Hi, Layla. Hi, Layla. How are you? Fine. Good. Looks like we made it. Oh, don't sing. <laughs> yeah, no, for God's sake, don't There's sing. enough trouble in the world. They'll all start Pleasure to be up. with you today, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. My goodness. So, um, you know, I just, we go back. I want the crowd to know sort of how, how we met each other. Um, I worked with your uncle, Rick Wetzel, many, many moons ago in the film industry. He was a, a makeup artist, and I would ass assist him sometimes, and, and his friend, my, crazy friend, Mike Michaels. Yes. And, yeah. I mean, that was, you were probably a baby then. That would be, what year were you born? So we're all going to date ourselves now. Well, I guess. Well, I'm 93. You don't, you don't, I you don't, have, you don't have to say, but were, were you around in the 80s? Because I met your uncle Rick in... Uh, yeah. 1985. I was born in 1979, so I'm 44 as of April 19th. Wow. Okay. Well, you certainly don't look it. Whatever you're thank doing, you. keep doing it. <laughs> Stand in the gym. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's well, right. you must be a good boxer because your face is in a lovely, good shape. Yeah. Yeah. No I, yeah thanks. <laughs> I tend to be the one uh, giving the punishment and not receiving it. Um, I've good. been fortunate in that way. Good. Which yeah. is kind of the whole point, right? Oh, absolutely. And I so like how did you actually, um, yeah. how did you get started? Where on earth does a little girl say, I want to be a pugilist? Well, as you know, I wasn't the most usual little girl. Um, I followed my Uncle Rick and my brother into the martial arts, and mm -hmm. I stayed in that. And um, I looked up to people like, uh, you know, I didn't idolize, you know, Barbie or... Um, I don't know. I was um, I wanted to be Snake from Escape from L.A. Yeah. <laughs> Snake Pliskin. Snake Pliskin. And I told my family one time, you know, uh, my name isn't Layla anymore. Call me Snake. So my brother <laughs> to this day still calls me Snake. Snake. Oh, that's funny. I like that. But I stayed in the martial arts. Yeah. And um, and my brother went back to football and other things. And I stayed in that um, lane because it gave me um, a lot of structure and uh, guidance and um, discipline and things that I needed, you know? What? And then it just brought me to boxing eventually as a teenager, you know, when what? I really needed a direction. What particular martial art did you uh, start with? Uh, primarily, I started also with um, Ed Parker's American Kempo Karate. That was my main art. Um, okay. And I continued that in Washington State much later, but I started that in Kansas and small town in Kansas, Abilene. And did you go actually go and live there to do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we moved a lot as a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, um, we moved around a lot. So I tried a different martial art everywhere we went. And Great. Yeah. And then as a teenager in Washington State, I found boxing through um, full contact karate and to kickboxing and then just, you know, a series of choices that brought me to where I belonged, I guess. Do you think that having all of that rounded education, as it were, um, made you a better boxer in the long run, either physically or, or mentally? Mentally, for sure, definitely, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Because the, the Asian, the, the martial arts of, of you know, Asia, and, and whether you call it 
um, I guess the, the mind training would be, I'm going to show my ignorance here, Tai Chi, and then, mm -hmm. and then karate and all of those other things. That is just as much as I understand. It's just as much to do with your mental state and, and clarity and goal as your physical abilities, isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. And the principles of motion are all the same, you know, physics and balance and all these things translate between martial arts, boxing and all, all the martial arts, you know. Very um, interesting. So speak a little bit about when you when you say, um, you know, the physics of it. Where, where do you when you're a kid and you, somebody starts to teach you boxing, what's the what's the first most important thing they teach you? Oh, geez. I'm not sure. I, I learned boxing as a teenager, but um, the main thing is discipline and respect, I suppose, you know, and the work ethic was always a big in my family and um, carried into the martial arts. But right. mm -hmm. footwork, um, yeah. balance and positioning, I think positioning is the most important thing in boxing, um, mm -hmm. being one step ahead of your opponent and thinking ahead of the game. I see. So it's like, like phys exercise. physical chess, right? In a, in a way. In a way, yes. Exactly. You know what they can throw from the position that you are and you know what your um, op um, options are from that position. So. But you're thinking all the time, aren't you? While but it's programmed, yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm not... Mm, yes, thinking, but at a faster pace because it's been programmed over years of discipline yes. and training. And, um, so it's sort of instinct like in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know your mum is, uh, you know, you're very close, you two, a bit like us. We can so, be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did she feel about it in the early days? Did she support you or did she want you to be a ballerina? <laughs> oh, she wasn't crazy about it, but my mom always told me just to follow my heart, do what I, you know, yeah. or it was implied that um, they supported me no matter who I was or what I did, my brother and my mom. We're very yeah. good about that. So good. I did football as a kid with my brother. I, you know, I fought. I got in martial arts. I don't think I knew I was a girl until I was about fifteen. Wow. <laughs> well, wow. how interesting. How about school? I mean, did, did kids give you a hard time at school? Definitely. Yeah, I got picked on a lot because I was different. You know, I was totally. Yeah. I couldn't relate with the girls in my age and the yes. boys I was friends with, but they were also insecure about getting their butt kicked by a girl. So yeah. there were some, um, some, some ways I had to fight through. Yeah, I was always sort of not really ever a girly girl. Um, I was what they would have called a tomboy, I guess, back in my day. Um, and when they were missing a, a boy from the boys' rugby team, um, you know, I was taller than everybody else and I had long legs. So they invited me to play a couple of games and just the uproar that that caused having one girl on a boys rugby team. So I, I mean, I did it for a matter of weeks, but I can only right. imagine what, That's you know, amazing. Rugby is so tough. well, rugby is, is tough. And, but I found a way cause you know, 11 year old boys, girls have cooties, right? They don't. Uh, All right. Uh, so <laughs> um, on the rare occasions I would get the ball, I would shove it up my t-shirt under my sports <laughs> and run with it, knowing that no 11 year old was going to touch her. <laughs> and just run and make a try, you know, so clever, total, clever. Cheating, total cheating, but that's clever, <laughs> clever. Yeah. yeah, I bet you got bullied a little bit from that or, you know, picked on a little. I did. I did. But I, I wanted to live a minute in the boys world and just just Definitely. experience that, you know. Yeah. I think I just like to be contrary. Whatever they told me that I can't do, that's what I wanted to do. So, yeah. So you realized from the beginning it was going to be a tough life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and you dealt with it. Did you yeah. take Did you take into account when you started thinking about boxing? Did your mind go to all of the, you know, the away games, if you will, and the traveling and the late nights and the planes and the trains and the missed luggage and all of that? Not really. No. No, but you you come to learn fast, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I I didn't have much of um. I'm not sure about those experiences, but I had a lot of strange experiences with boxing for sure. You know, um, go, go ahead. Do tell. Do tell. Yes. <laughs> you know, the corruption, the, the promoters take advantage when you're by yourself, when you have no management and you're kind of doing your own, you're trying to figure it out as you go. Yeah. Um, so there were times that I didn't get my food money or that I didn't get paid or that, you know, that uh, rip you off on your check or, you know, and, and this happened so many times and you never forget those moments that, you know, you're at your lowest and somebody kicks you. That's, you know, unforgivable and unforgettable. 
So, and but also those kindnesses that you find in people that, yeah. you know, in the moments that you're the lowest, they pick mm -hmm. you up. So, yeah, right. you, you don't forget those, do you? Never. Your uh, your uncle Rick Wetzel is on that we were just talking about before. He says, "Best Wetzel, of hey. Rick, hey, Rick and Kim have managed to tune in. He's probably got his uh, satellite dish tuned to something." <laughs> <laughs> Dina, okay. our, our friend, a former guest of ours who is a, uh, she's in the sports world, but on the technical end, Dina is a Hall of Fame broadcaster. She's shot oh, wow. uh, NFL cameras for years with her partner, Jeff. Um, she's asking an interesting question. What do you do for electrolyte replacement? Um, Meaning you know, water versus Gatorade, I guess, is what the question means. The interesting question, I don't really focus on that so much. I drink a ton of water, especially when I'm working out, um, often with lemon juice to cut the fat. Um, but I, I'm not really, I think I just hydrate well. Okay. Mm. Well, speaking of which, yeah, speaking cheers of which, to you. Cheers. We're hydrating. Hi, We're hydrating on your You'll behalf. <laughs> with All right. tea. Well, I'm the only one at Tea Flicks with tea, apparently, but that's cool. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, mine's cranberry tea. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Excellent. Sure it is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when you are not, uh, you know, when, when you're in between bouts, what's your training regimen? Um, I stay in the gym every day. I go to the boxing gym or I go running one or the other. I don't do both, of course, when I'm not, when I have no fight coming up. Right. But right. I stay doing something every day, at least one workout. Right. Because what is it you, you, my grandmother used to say, you become what you repeatedly do. And if you sit on the couch, you'll become the couch. <laughs> Definitely. Lately, I've had a lot of couch sitting, but um, I just have been taking about a, a week off. Um, I'm kind of at a crossroads in my career and my life, and I'm leaning into retirement a little bit, maybe. Which, which sounds amazing at 44, but when you think about the physical toll that your job and career has... Yes. Um, you know, I, I hear like Tom Brady, he's going to retire and he's 40 something, yeah. but yeah, when you've been, you know, beat on and it's not just the bouts, is it? It's the, the training too. Absolutely. And I've turned pro in 1998. I was 19 when I turned professional. So this is my 25th year officially. Oh as my a That's a pretty long, uh, professional yeah. athletic career. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, when you go to different countries and also you've got the time, change on the clock and on your body to do oh, yeah. it how, how how do you cope with that is there a specific way or did you just get there early <laughs> get there early is definitely a key which i didn't learn till later in my career that i could you know negotiate better but yeah um i definitely try to get there early enough to acclimate and i try to get on their time schedule right away when i travel yeah. um and hydrate a lot that's a big key too Yes. Yeah, sure. Where is the where is the favorite play outside of the ring? Where would you say are your I won't make you pick one. Where where's like the top three places that your career has taken you to geography? Um, you know, it depends because the, the experience is tied to it, of course. And when right. I fought in East London, South Africa was one of the greatest moments of my career, if not the greatest, um, because of the people. Um it was an incredible experience. I went and fought an undefeated fighter in her hometown, and I was the lightweight WBA champion at the time. I yeah. moved up three weight classes to fight her at super welterweight. And she was undefeated. I'm fighting in her hometown. I know I have to win by knockout. Mm. And by the in the eighth round, I finally got her, and it was just a moment like no other. Yeah. Wow. And were they supportive or did you get booed for knock, knocking out the hometown girl? You know, it was, it was really scary because it went dead silent. You know, the oh. atmosphere had been electric before and I, I, I was soaking it up when I walked to the ring and just, it was emotional. I was like, how many people get to feel this? I was really in the moment. Yeah. Of, of, it's me versus everybody here. And it was just a great moment. And, and when it happened, everybody went really quiet. And <laughs> I was like, uh oh, uh -oh. are we going to get out of here alive? Yeah. yeah. You know, eventually they embraced me and the people, like I say, in South Africa are really special to me. Um, and over the years, we've formed a bond since. Wow. Um, I, I, I conquered their hero. OK. But they came to me after. And the next year I returned and did an anti-drug campaign with the WBA. So we talked to the kids in the school. We, we talked to the university students about doping. Um, so I've had a lot of good experiences, you know, and um, I'm going back there 
in the end of July this year, they've oh. invited me for a Mandela celebration. Oh. So I attend a dinner with the dignitaries and um, and they've just kind of made me their champion. And oh. um, I get to attend a boxing event while I'm there. So it's going to gonna be really cool to see all my friends in South Africa again. Yes. I saw on your Instagram, which is where our audience should go to uh, Layla at Layla McCarter on Instagram and Facebook and what have you. But I just I could feel the smiles on that amazing photograph of you with all those school kids. Oh, my goodness. They were uh, so I just feel the energy. Go go look at it, folks. Go go to Layla's Instagram. And there's there's a picture of you like in the middle of the sea of just. Kids. The kids are so beautiful. And like the first time we didn't do it right, we didn't um, know how to do this. So we went down to greet the kids after we talked to them on the stage and they rushed us um, and kids were falling down and getting stepped on and everything went crazy. And the teachers started whacking the kids. And I'm just like, <laughs> I've never seen that in my life. You know, in, in the United States, in my era, we don't, you know, really have that kind of punishment. No. Know? Whacking the children. Well, I was you might shocked. want to. <laughs> Sometimes you might want to, yeah. So then we broke them into groups in the next school and, you know, did it smarter. We got we, we learned as we went, you know. Yes. Aww. David Hauser, our friend David, is asking, how important is the ring announcer to the whole psych game for the for the fighters? Um, It's somewhat important. I, I wouldn't put a lot, of the, you know, a major importance on it, but it's definitely great to have a knowledgeable ring announcer who doesn't mess up your name or your stats right before. Yeah, um, one of my favorite ring announcers is Jake Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. He lives in Las Vegas, and um, he always takes the time to get to know the uh, combatants, and he goes and talks to them and and makes sure he's pronouncing it right and getting yes. the nickname right. And he's just one of the top professionals I've ever known. That's great. Yes. That's, yeah. No, yeah, I know. It's, it's definitely a great thing. Yeah. When they get it right. You know, I, some of the highest paid announcers out there, um, I, I guess I shouldn't put him on blast, but he did my fight in the BKB and this guy makes a ton of money and, and he messed up the way I say my nickname at the first of my name and he messed up my name and called me Layla Carter. So I'm like, yeah, <sighs> yeah, no. it, it is important. Well, but you just that it could be. I mean, it's a great question from David. I would imagine that, you know, having again been an artist and then somebody calls you out on stage and does the intro for you, if something is off, it can just like set a little piece of your brain, like, and you lose your concentration for a minute. It, you know, it totally. can kind of throw you off. Absolutely. Definitely the ring music is more important in that aspect to me. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Yeah. It, Oh, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. It's part of the process of getting in the zone where you've done the same thing over and over again and, and you're used to this walk and you're used to this music and somebody plays something like Suicidal, this song, this stupid yep. 90s song that they played one time. And that's the last time I actually lost a fight was when they messed up my music. I can't blame it for that, but it didn't help. Wow. How interesting. And so do you get to, what part of the music do do you, the athlete, get to pick? Um, what type of, uh, I can pick, uh, my ring, my ring walk, but sometimes they mess up and they'll play whatever, you know, they'll say, well, you can get bad at somebody, but you got to walk now, you know, they're oh. on TV time Ooh, and, wow. and there's nothing you can really do about it. And that's happened a few times, but the last time I lost a fight that happened. So, wow. wow but you haven't lost fun. very many, I must it's say. A, no, I'll tell you what, uh, time for a bit of boasting. Tell us how many, how many I mean, wins, I've, I've how read, many knockouts. Yeah. Um, well, they're not all on box rec, unfortunately. My fight in oh. Dubai didn't count there and my BKB fight. But it, it's about 46 wins and 13 losses and five draws. Wow. Currently. Those are some pretty good odds. Not bad, girly. You don't like getting hit, do you? <laughs> I haven't lost in over 16 years. So, I mean, not bad. You can tell. Look at her face. Wow. That's not I got better thing. as I went, you know. I your, learned my craft. Uh, your Aunt Kim is on here saying hello from California cow country. Kimmy. And, uh, Big fan of the amazing Layla, who isn't absolutely. How how could you not? I'm a big fan of Kimmy. Yeah, me Kimmy too. Though. For holding holding down that crazy oh. crazy uh, spy balloon that is your uncle. I know. I, I know. <laughs> She's got her hands full. You get well, she certainly does. Heaven, Kimmy. Yeah, no, Kimmy. I love yeah. those two. They're great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so people. I was just uh, delighted to learn you'll be inducted into the West Coast Boxing Hall of Fame this coming October. 
Um, I certainly hope we'll be able to attend. Thank you for the invitation. Um, Tell us, tell us about that process and, you know, what, what, what it means in your, in your world. It's an incredible honor. You know, the West Coast Boxing Hall of Fame is one of the best organizations. Um, And uh, Roberto Duran and I were the first two announced inductees for this class. And I was just shocked, blown away to be mentioned in the same sentence with him, much less to be in the same induction class. You know, and I told the president, you know, I'll wait. I'm happy to wait my turn, you know, because they've been waiting for me to retire forever. Right. um, you're supposed to be retired like five years before you get inducted in these things. Oh, but they, he said, I'm making an exception. I'm tired of waiting. And, um, I don't care if you fight 10 more years, I'm going to induct you now. Good. Wow. That's fantastic. So, I'll take it. You know, it's just a huge honor to be there with so many great fighters and, you know, yeah. boxing is a family. So, um, yeah. to, to see them as my peers and to be recognized as one of them is just right. the greatest. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't have dreamed it better. Yeah, it's, you, it seems funny when you say boxing's a family and you get up there and knock the crap out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but it's all respect in the end, especially the people that you have fought with in the yeah. ring. There's definitely shared history and um, yeah. respect. Yeah. yeah, and when you meet like family occasions, you say, oh, come to tea and I'll smash your face. <laughs> <laughs> I've sparred with a lot of my former opponents as well, you know, so oh, it's kind of interesting, you know, years yeah. later. Yeah, that's wild. That's great. Dina's asking, um, since you have an incredible career, people love to know your training regimen, uh, the top of the world fitness. Would you train others with your own training video program? Maybe have you thought about doing a masterclass? It's an kind interesting of a- thought. I mean, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't uh, count that out. I, it's a good thought. You know, I haven't given it much um, thought yet, but I'm at a crossroads again, so I might, yeah. you know start yeah. to think about that definitely well you know, if you're in regiment i do a lot of cardio i do um you know the road work the running i do plyometrics in the gym every day when i warm up in the boxing gym i do you know um i guess we call them line drills you know two-legged hops crazy legs turnarounds uh bob and weave wow. i'd have to explain those in video but yeah. um it's I a do. great Great work. Well, if you get if you get to a point um, once you actually have retired, if you get to a point of thinking about video, certainly do let me know, and I'll put you in touch with Dina and Jeff, who know that video is their whole world, and they know a lot of people. Really and, excellent. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yes. a really it's excellent. a fun thing about T Flix is that you know we we make connections here that you never otherwise would have. I love made it because yeah. Madam, you know, drags her champagne glass out every Tuesday and <laughs> we gather around. I love it. I tell everyone about you guys, you know, and uh, just Aww. it's such a great program and a great show. And you guys are great people, you know. Aww, How you. is your lovely mom? She's great. She's getting Ooh. ready to go to the Bahamas where I was supposed to fight. Um, but that fell through. So she decided to make a trip of it anyway with her husband. And and then Ooh. we're going to Scotland together um, at the end of May. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. my sister Lori, my foster sister Lori, and my mom and I are going to take a little tour of Scotland for a couple of weeks, oh, May twenty third to the sixth of June. Oh, okay. you you love it, and you love the people. They're so welcoming. Yeah. I've been working on my pronunciations to not offend the the. Oh, uh, hi oh, hey, the new. Oh, hey, the new. Edinburgh, right? Edinburgh. Yeah. Ed- Edinburgh. Yeah. Not I'm not going to say Edinburgh because I know that offends everyone. Yeah, that's American, yeah. yeah. And it's not Glasgow. It's like Glasgow. Glasgow. Glasgow or Glasgow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Her, my my grandfather, Angie's father, was a uh, a chemist, sta- a biochemist stationed in Glasgow during World War One. No way. And um, he New Year's Eve, I think it was probably New Year's Eve, nineteen. 19- 19 or 1920 or something and he was down on the main street in glasgow um in a pub as you are on new year's eve in sucky hall in sucky hall street they call it and they had these huge uh curbs in those days because they still i mean cars weren't prevalent they still had horse and carriages and horses horses would poop and so you didn't want that splashing up on the sidewalk so they had these these huge things and they all went outside at midnight and somebody let off some rudimentary you know bottle rocket firecracker things and um there was a little scotsman in down on the street level and my grandfather was very tall so he sort of came up to his waist almost 
and he was staggering drunk. He, he had one foot planted and he was one of those, you know, when you see people so drunk, yeah, 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 yeah. trying to hold themselves up. And he looked up at the, the fireworks and said, who lit the light? It meant who, who lit, lit the, the lights? lights? And my grandfather said, pardon me, what now? He said, who, who lit the light? <laughs> it's deep Scottish for who lit the lights. Oh, and after tough. about five, five goes of this, my grandfather clipped him behind the ear and said, oh, piss off, you Scandinavian bastard. Oh, no. <laughs> He thought he was Swedish or Norwegian, but he was just a full-on Scot trying That's to say hilarious. he lit the lights. I, the lights. The Scottish. I think there's a trick to it, though. You have to drink the scotch, right? And then maybe you can understand them. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes, yeah. maybe. That, that could be. I think if you get a, a little bit of the whiskey, you know, the ishkabea, yeah. as they call it. Yes. Could, yeah. yeah. A drop of the hard or, stuff. Or uh, yeah. a Wetzel's breakfast drink, you mean? Yes. <laughs> No, I think that's a tequila sunrise, but okay. I, I don't. It's not my day to watch him. Okay. <laughs> and not me more. No, it's As, his, speaking of job. speaking of the lady who is the day it is to watch him. Um, Kim is asking when are they going to make a movie of your amazing life, amazing Layla? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, my my amazing life isn't quite over, so I haven't. Ooh. I have more chapters to write, I think, before um, before that happens, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure. You know, you could do part one. I could, I could. There's a lot of stories there. Yeah, I bet. Mark, our friend Mark Lindsay from Houston, who's actually in Montego Bay, Jamaica, aboard a cruise ship as we speak, he is um, asking, would you potentially manage other young boxes so they don't get ripped off? That's I would likely do that. Definitely, I'll be around boxing, and I have the knowledge. And um, you know, my partner Luis also manages a lot of fighters, and I'm kind of a partner in that. So, yeah. Definitely, it's good to pass on your knowledge in those things. Yeah. Do you find many young girls interested? Um, oh, it's tons. It's it's way bigger than it was when I was coming up. There was no yes. there were no women in the gym. I was the only one most of the time, and wow. it's strange for me now to see so many women. It's just yes. odd, you know, for me. But um, it's great. It's it's amazing. No women had amateur fights when I came up. They were just going straight from kickboxing into professional boxing and learning on the job. Wow. Um, but now they have, you know, 100 or 80, 100, you know, or more amateur wow. fights. It's amazing. Yeah. That's great. And the Olympics, which was, um, it's right. been two or three Olympics now that they've had. Female boxers. Yeah. It's great. And if you think about it, in 1993 was when they lifted the ban in USA Boxing to allow women to fight in the amateurs. It was only then. That we were allowed to fight in the in the amateurs. So I was getting, around in the mid nineties wondering where is everybody, but it was I didn't realize how new it was yes. right at the time. Mm -hmm. We're getting a, a shout out from Chile in South America from Carlos Carlos, yes. Carlos Guillermo Bustos Morales is on. Yeah, is, Carlos is the greatest. Yeah. He's a big friend and supporter of us and um and we we do a lot of things together and he's just a, a great guy. Yeah. Very cool. My partner, Luis, is also from Chile, so they have that Chilean connection. Aha, I see, I see. Thank Talk you, Dina. You. Yeah. Well, you're both trailblazers. You, Dina and Layla should definitely know each other. Oh, yeah. For sure. We'll hook you up. Definitely. Yeah. I look forward to it. Yeah. 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 She lives out near Palm Springs area, so you're not too terribly far apart. Hopefully. That's, that's amazing. So what is uh, what is next for you, um, as far as on the calendar, fight-wise, do you have anything lined up? Or you, you, you I, current was, I was going to head to Mexico on um, today, actually. Lewis is flying out and um, going down for the show. But I decided that, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to do that kind of fight now, just to, you know, stay active and pay for a fight. or It's silly. Um, so I'm going to wait and maybe do one more fight this year and finish it up, maybe. There's no legitimate um, offers coming through. Um, the pay hasn't been adequate for women, and um, it's still a level of disrespect there. Yeah. So you know, if I have to go to England, for example, and 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 basically kill somebody to win, yeah. they have to make it worth my while, and I'll yeah. step up for it, like I always have. But you know, otherwise, I've done everything in my career. I've jumped through all the hoops they told me to. You know, it's just one more fight, one more fight. You know, if you do this, maybe you'll get paid. But in oh. the end, it's just an um, empty yeah. promise. Yeah. Well, this is how Brittany Griner, poor Brittany, wound up in Russia, isn't it? These women's sports don't pay enough. 
yeah. they have to, they have to go abroad to play, you know, um, exhibition games and so on and so forth. I wouldn't say to make ends meet, but you know, in the, in the WNBA, if you're a top player, or a female player mm. in basketball, you may be pulling 150, 200,000 a year, and the men are all on millions of dollars in contracts. Right. Right. Look how hard the women in soccer had to fight to get a right. raise. Right. But then they'll argue that um, it has to do with the revenue as well. Okay. There is an argument for that. But even when the revenue is equal, they decide to pay you less because of the outright misogyny of, of, of where we are. There's, it's, well, it maybe doesn't that's, matter how much money you pull in. They still maybe. try to find an excuse to pay the women less and to keep them in their, in their place, such as two minute rounds. They want to make women fighting fight two minute rounds instead of three. They say it's for the safety of the fighter because you know I guess we're women and we're fragile and whatnot. Oh. Okay. But wow. I outcondition any man in my gym, and um, you know I fought three minute rounds many times in Nevada. I changed the policy to allow women to fight three minute rounds. Wow. And you know my brain's not broken. Look. No. Um, so. It's That's just true. a lot of things we have to contend with as females in the world and in sports. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and, the, and it sounds like with the two-minute versus three-minute rounds, they're trying to dress up the misogyny as chivalry, and we're just doing it totally. to protect you girls, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Protect us from ourselves, please. I mean, we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, have you seen the new George Foreman movie yet? I have. I was um, privileged to be invited by the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame to a private screening in Nev at the Palms Casino. Oh, at Brendan Theaters. We had our own theater for just the boxers and the boxing people in oh, Nevada. Great. Good. And it was an incredible movie. I have you seen it? Not yet. No, not yet. Oh, it's very good. Very good. I really liked the story. I was I, I had low expectations going in, as I do with most boxing movies, but yeah. this one was um, a very very good story, and I was impressed by George Foreman's life and uh, history. Yeah. We had a friend, he's, he passed on, um, Tony Fritsch, his name was, he was an Austrian who came here and played for the NFL. He used to play for the, kicker, Houston, um, he was a kicker for the Dallas Cowboys and um, made a fortune and then went home to Austria and opened uh, an American type steakhouse, you know, like a oh. Houston steakhouse in Vienna. And when George Foreman fell on hard times, he found himself in Europe and I guess he was doing exhibition matches or whatever because, right. you know, he had all these kids all named George to support, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and he found himself going to this American restaurant thinking, oh, well, maybe they, they speak English and what have you. And he applied for a job. He said, I'll wash dishes. I'll be a greeter. I'll, I'll be a busboy. I'll do absolutely anything. And Tony Fritsch said... No, 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 not with, with your brand and your career and your achievements and your heart. Right. Um, yes, you can come in the restaurant every night and shake hands and glide hand and take pictures with people and, you know, be a celebrity. But let's just tell everyone you're my partner in the restaurant for the dignity of it. Oh, wow. Well, that's so nice. This, yeah. So yeah. He, he gave him a job and a salary and he, he put a he rented him two apartments side by each and put the, the kids all in it and the wife and kids. Oh, wow. And um, after a while, George got back on his feet and then he did the George Foreman grill deal with these right. panini makers. And the very first check that he got, not only, I'm going to make myself cry, um, <laughs> Tony Fritch was also a supporter of a battered wives, a battered women's and children's shelter in, mm. uh, in Vienna. And um, George Foreman, <laughs> He showed up in Vienna one night at the restaurant after he got his first check from uh, Sears or whoever the grill people were. Yeah. Not only paid Tony Fritsch back all the wages that he'd earned, but made like a million euro donation to this shelter on the condition wow. that, that Tony Fritsch would take that to the grave. He would never publicize it. And so Tony has passed and his children have passed this story on. But George went back and not only paid it back, he paid it forward. That's incredible. What a great story that is. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I said, you don't forget people that help you when you're down. And, and exactly. that's a prime example. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, he's absolutely a class act. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, yeah, I just thought that was such a heartwarming story. And it was on condition of anonymity. He never wanted anybody to know where the money came from. That is a great story. You know, and George Foreman is one of those um, rare examples of a boxer that came down to hard times and then, you know, turned it around. So yes. many fighters in bad, you know. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So Kim, Kim is saying you have to become a women's sports best ambassador. If not, 
If not Layla, then who? Absolutely. I yeah. think there's a, a huge career there for you in in sports and, and you know, broadcasting and anti-misogyny and, and things like yeah. that. I mean, sports is amazing that it can transcend so many things, race, religion. I mean, when I was in South Africa, I got a prime example of that with the people, how, you know, they went through apartheid, you know, the white people were the, you yeah. know, the, the devil, so to speak. But um, here they are embracing me from America through sports, you know, and it was just such a touching thing to me that, you know, sports can, um, you know, we can conquer problems, domestic violence. You know, we, we spoke out about drugs. Um, there's just a lot of problems that we have in common. And we are more alike than we are, you know, different, um, different as people. Well, I think yeah. that's where the term ping pong diplomacy came from, wasn't it? When during the Nixon era, um, when China, you know, was super communist and wasn't open, we actually started um, ping pong. We sent Tom Hanks over there, didn't we? That's we right. did, and, and then Dennis Rodman went and tried to make friends with North Korea. But you're right; it's sports is very like music in that way. Yeah. It cross it transcends all borders, doesn't it? Definitely. You know, we yeah. sports, sports, music, and math. You know, I don't care what religion you are or what language you speak. There are only nine numbers. Yes, ten, ten if you count zero. But you know, we. Wow, the, that's one way to think of it. I, I wish I'd had you as a math teacher. Ah, no, you want to be you want to be strongest. <laughs> You want to meet our friend Scott Flansburg. He's been on Oprah and whatever. He's an absolute, he can literally retrain your brain in half an hour to think of um, zero through nine as the numbers. Interesting. Okay. And then yeah. ten, 10 becomes the next block. It's not one to 10, it's zero through nine. Anyway, yeah. go look at go That's look another at, discussion for another day. Another day. But for I've sure. always thought of, you know, the things that we share are you know sports and if you just look at the olympics and the para olympics um yes you know, you, if you know the rules of soccer or tennis you don't even have to speak the same language you get in yeah. the, on the court and play the game yeah amazing yeah it's a great thing you know and and it can help us do a lot of things you know together absolutely mm -hmm. it's great well, it's thing. been absolutely wonderful we um usually for our very special guests we end with a limerick which is a little irish oh, excellent poem. Okay. You know. so. And so before we end, have a look, people across the bottom there, go find Layla at Layla McCarter on uh, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media and Wikipedia. The top of your head will come up when you read her, um, uh, her resume. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, okay. So, but we're going to uh, uh, serenade you with your very own limerick. So here okay. we go. Oh, great. One, two, two three. three. Young Layla's incredibly able. able. Her, Her bio, bio reads just like a fable. <laughs> Do you want to start this several? again? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's start this again. Yeah. Uh, one, two, two three. three. Young <laughs> Layla's incredibly able. Her bio, bio reads just like a fable. After several swift jabs, jabs your career's up for grabs. Her, Her opponent, opponent is under the table. table. Uh, <laughs> lovely. Thank you. I have my own limerick now. This is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, send me your address and we'll print it out and send it to you. Please, I will. I will. I would love that. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you thank so you much for us. taking the time. I know mm -hmm. Luis is off to uh, to Mexico, and you're a busy, busy lady. So I'm gonna take um, him off to the airport right now. And um, yes. all right, good, and, fantastic. Um, thank Thanks you so all much. for the support, everybody who showed up, and everybody who's gonna watch this, and all of you guys for having me, uh, right. Dr. McCartney, yes. and Ruth. Absolutely, and Dr. McCartney. Dr. McCartney. Oh, Dr. McCartney, isn't that? that? Dr. Angie. That's Dr. <laughs> Dr. Angie. Dr. Angie, that's and, me. And, and not baby. Dr. Ruth. There you go. Yeah. You guys are lovely. Thank you so much for everything. God bless you. Thank you, you so much. God bye bless. Bye. Talk to you Bye. Soon. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.